Here are three simple but effective wood carving tips for any carving project. Be sure to listen to the last one because I think it is the most important. Tip number one, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just kidding guys, well not really, please subscribe, but tip number one for real is to quit using dull bits and burrs and I know, I know you guys probably know that, but as we both know, simple stuff like this is often overlooked. When we carve with dull bits and burrs, what actually happens is we begin to burn the wood and we make some really messy carvings. And I am the world's worst about this because I will want to hang on to every burr I have because I have to get all the life out of it I can. And when you begin to carve different curved lines, even straight lines, your burr gets so dull that it quits actually eating the wood. The most simple way to find out if a burr is dull is to replace it with a new one and see how it carves on the same project. I want to recommend some good quality burrs to you that I've been using for a long time. Number one, for roughing, I use cut saw burrs. Yes, these can be a little pricey, but they last a long time. And I actually have an affiliate link below and I think you can get like 5% off or something like that. And the last thing I want this to be is a promotional video, but if it saves you money, hey, <laughs> there you go. Another brand of burrs you may not know of is Duragrit. These guys can be pretty expensive too, but they last a long time. What makes these burrs so special is that they actually weld some type of like carbide material on the end, and it just removes a lot of stock and it will last a long time. Now, along with these, I do recommend a cheap set from Amazon. And by the way, the name of the game on Amazon is rebranding, so a lot of the burrs that you buy that look similar are coming from the same factory with a different name on them. So pick you up a cheap pair for around $15 and always have those on hand. Be sure to get some burrs in different shapes and sizes because this will help you perform different tasks depending on the burr that you get. And tip number two is to map your projects and what I mean by that is take note of what inspires you. For me, I love knives and tomahawks and Viking and Celtic designs. That is like my thing, I can't get enough of it. And so I blend a lot of those features together, just like this hawk right here, that's kind of blurry right now. That has a Celtic design. I carved all the way through it and, or all the way on it rather. And I absolutely love the way that it turned out, including all of the mistakes that I made on it. So be sure to take a note on what inspires you. I even have some Native American designs that I have logged online in a digital folder. That way I can keep track of it. So you want to map your projects out. I try to keep a paper copy of all of my inspiration ideas and things that I drew that inspire me. You know that hawk right here? This is that design. This came from this piece of paper, of course, with some embellishments on it since I messed it up. I recall the great inspirational speaker Jim Rohn once saying, bathing doesn't last, so we have to do it again. The same thing is true for motivation. It does not last, so you have to keep yourself motivated. Anyway, guys, I want that to inspire you. Save some images on your computer. Print out some if that's what it takes. Keep yourself motivated. Along with this thought, a lot of you guys should be using carbon templates. Now, I showed this in other videos of how to print off an image, put some carbon transfer paper on it, and transfer it to the wood so you can carve it. Using templates are a great way to get started carving, and I will tell you the most seasoned carvers still use templates. They are a lifesaver. I also want to give you a tip here. Mix your designs together. And what I mean by that is this. Let's say that you like fishing and you also like camping. Well, what if we mixed fishing with camping and marry those two together? Let's say hypothetically we carve a big basswood plaque and we have this cabin on one side, this river, this bass coming up and have some fishing poles leaned up to the side. You can just mix those elements together. Are you getting it? This is what will make your pieces unique. And I actually cover my entire process of how to do this in my project idea guide. And oh my gosh, I did not mean to make this video promotional. But anyway, if you guys wanna check that out, it will be in the links below. And for my third and final tip, as simple as this is, I hope you guys do this. You need to carve simple shapes if you are just beginning with carving. I'm talking about triangles, circles, squares. What happens when you do this is like when you are carving a circle, your hand is getting used to that circular motion. When you are carving a triangle, you are getting used to carving straight lines. When you are carving a square, you are getting used to straight lines and learning how to make your corners sharp and not rounded. These three shapes carved over and over and over is going to make a world of difference because when you get to a bigger project, 
you are going to take everything that you learn from those three simple shapes, it will apply right over here. You will have great hand control, you will know how to take corners, and when you get into more advanced stuff like adding depth and making things 3D, you are going to be ready for it. So if you are a beginner, start here. If you have been carving for a while, but just you're kind of like hit and miss with your carving, well start here and start carving some shapes. Trust me on this, I know it can get boring and repetitive, but I promise you it will pay you dividends. By the way, my free ebook has this tip in it. Go download it at howtowoodcarve.com. It's absolutely free. If you're not pleased with your outcome or results from power carving, I wanna let you guys know something. Power carving can be hard, especially when you compare it to traditional carving methods with carving chisels, carving spoons, carving knives, because you are not using this sharp carving gouge to scoop out this piece of wood. You are using a rotating instrument digging into the wood. So therefore, you are going to get a lot messier results. Over time, your techniques will develop. The more time you spend carving, the more time that you are going to develop that gift. And I'm gonna tell you something. Skills have to be earned. They just don't come just out of nowhere. A lot of people look at my channel and think I just know how to carve. It did not work that way. I spent long, grueling hours carving until I got to the point where I'm at today. I could have reached it faster if I had someone to help guide me along. I did find at some point someone did help. I'm still not where I wanna be. I still look at different pieces and I'm like, oh my gosh, Matt, what are you thinking? This doesn't look good but we are all a work in progress. So just remember this, skills are developed. They don't happen overnight. So develop your skills, develop that gift. You can have the gift of wood carving if you desire it. You just got to go after it and put your heart into it. And while I'm on my rant, here is my bonus tip number four. That is to quit stippling as much. If you don't know what stippling is, it means you have a round burr and you are making dots in the background of an area to give it detail. Now, nothing is wrong with stippling, but it is so overused in the power carving community. I'm a huge fan of it, but as I have grown in my art, I have learned to get away from it as much because it can look ugly. And so I have stopped it and used different background techniques for achieving the desired outcome that I want. And I want to leave you guys with this. Start with the tool that you have. The tool that you have is the best tool that you have if it's going to get the job done. I'm not going to lie to you guys, not all carving tools are created equally. In fact, in my life, when I switched from my Dremel to the Fordham, my art took a big leap because I was more efficient and I could get more done. And from the Fordham, I went to the SEM 400 XS handpiece and it jumped again because of how fast this thing is and I can get a lot more detail out of this tool. And just right quick, to prove my point to you, I have the SEM 400 XS. If I were to stipple all of this with another wood carving tool, my hand would absolutely kill me. But since this spins at 400,000 RPMs and is powered by air, this will get the job done fast. Watch this. Look how insanely fast this is stippling. I would not be able to do this on the Dremel, on the Fordham, or any other rotary tool except the 400 XS. That is just insane, look at that. All my tools were gathered over a period of my, I guess you could say my art career. I make money with my art, and as I got better with it and started making more money, I was able to invest into equipment that was good for me and helped me produce more results. I'm not telling you guys this so you can buy the biggest, most baddest piece of equipment out there to carve with. I'm saying this so you can start where you are at, even if it's a cheap $25 or $30 tool on Amazon. If that's all you have to spend, then get it and start carving and let your journey begin there. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Be sure to leave me a like and leave me a comment below and let me know what you are working on. Or if you have any questions, be sure to subscribe and download your free ebook at howtowoodcarve.com. See you guys later. Appreciate you.